What's up YouTube? Here we are, we're back with another uh, video for you. And this week we're gonna be talking about home theater basics. Like what do you need to get started with your home theater? And we're gonna start with televisions uh, because that's usually what most people start with when they start thinking about home theater. They buy a new TV and they wanna do all this other stuff. So let's talk about televisions. And of course, what we're talking about, flat screen TVs. That's all we can buy now. And we're talking three different technologies, OLED, LED, and QLED. I'm a bunch of acronyms. There's going to be nothing but acronyms really for this particular episode. But we want to talk about future proofing your TV and within those three technologies. OLED is OLED or organic light emitting diodes. The main thing about that is it actually, um, the technology allows the manufacturer to turn individual pixels off. So that gives you inky blacks, inky blacks or better contrast on the screen. And um, it's got really good off angle viewing. Price is a little bit higher, you know, more premium TVs um, are OLED. And that's because of the technology is still expensive. And also there's actually fewer manufacturers. There's LG, Sony, and Panasonic right now in 2017 that sells TVs to consumers in the US. And those TVs are all LG panels with Sony and Panasonic putting their own special sauce on top of those panels. But when you start looking at reviews, the best TVs are typically OLED. So if you want to, the best TV you can buy um, and you're not in some ridiculously bright room, um, pick up an OLED TV. Then you've also got LED TVs and QLED TVs. We'll start with QLED. That is a Samsung marketing term for an LED TV with a special filter in it that um, uses nanoparticles or quantum dots, I think that's where they got the Q from, um, to produce pure colors, better luminescence in color. So it's an LED TV, it's just got an extra filter in it so it'll give you better colors. And from what I understand, a lot of manufacturers now are actually putting something similar to that in that. So, you know, maybe it's not as big. But anyway, point is, that's what QLED is. And LED TVs, it is literally a LCD TV with an LED backlight. And what that means is you have a light behind your pixels. And so um, the more light you have behind your pixels, uh, the better the contrast ratio. So one of the games that uh, a lot of manufacturers play is they'll they'll have active zones, like 42 active zones or 82 active zones or whatever. And what that means is in a certain part of the picture, they can actually turn off the backlight. And so you get better contrast. So it competes better with like OLEDs or your old school plasmas um, when it comes on the black, but it's still not as good. Your blacks won't be as inky. But because of the way it's built, um, it does get a little bit brighter than an OLED TV. So if you're, if you've got your beautiful, you know, white uh, Miami apartment and you've got, you know, 10 foot windows all the way across this wall and you're looking out over the beach and you get, you know, sun 12 hours a day, you might want to go with an LED TV uh, or something like that. Something that's a little bit brighter or something. But otherwise, if you're in your normal room, you can probably, you can do either, whichever one works within your budget. LED TVs are the ones that are priced, um, that are a little bit they're a little bit cheaper than OLED TVs and also QLED, uh, and that's one of the reasons is because they've been out for long enough for the technology to mature and it's easier to produce, and also because pretty much every manufacturer makes at least one model of an LED TV. So those are your three: your OLED, your LED, and your QLED. And based on your situation and your budget, you can choose which one you want. Okay. Now let's start talking about the actual technology in these TVs. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is resolution, 4K UHD. Those two things are synonymous. They mean the same thing. 4K ultra high definition. That's what those are. And what that really means is you have four times the number of pixels over your quote unquote traditional 1080p TV. So you have, uh, 1920 pixels long by 1080 pixels high on a 1080p TV. With 4K, you have 3840 by 2160. So you have twice as many pixels in this direction and twice as many pixels in this direction. That's what that means. And so the closer you get to the TV, the harder it is to see the pixels. So it's a much better resolution. So that's 4K. 
The next technology is called HDR or high dynamic range. And what that means is you get more contrast than you would in a 1080p TV or in a standard definition TV or excuse me, standard dynamic range TV. Okay. And so think of it like this. If you're watching a movie and you have a 1950s car and there's some chrome on the bumper or some chrome on the tail light or something like that and the sun hits it and it's just really shiny bright well with and with our standard dynamic range it would just kind of wash out and you really couldn't see any detail right but with high dynamic range if it's graded correctly you'll end up being able to see a lot more detail than we could previously. And also the same thing goes with the shadows. In the darker scenes, there's also a lot more detail there as well. So you end up with more contrast. And more contrast is really, really good because that works with our vision and it actually makes the picture seem a little bit more, have a little bit more dimensionality, a little bit more 3D. Even though 3D is a, you know, I know some people, I love 3D, I hate 3D. It just gives it a little bit more realness. So that's the other thing, high dynamic range. That's one of the things that we want to talk about. And there's actually two um, versions of high dynamic range. There's HDR10 and, and Dolby Vision. Those are two kind of competing standards right now. And HDR10 is static metadata, which means that um, the metadata or what that whole movie is going to be graded to from a dynamic range standpoint is set up kind of at the beginning of the movie or at some point in the movie. And it's, that's just what it is. With Dolby Vision, it is dynamic metadata, which means that the you know what happens with the high dynamic range and colors and all that kind of stuff it can change from a scene to scene um frame by frame basis even if, even if you want to and so if you're looking for a tv today and you want to future proof yourself try to get one with dolby vision and hdr10 okay and then there's hdr10 plus which is supposed to be dynamic and the data that's coming out but that's not here yet so we're not going to talk about it. again this is 2017. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about is wide color gamut and wide color gamut is also key because what it does is it allows the TVs to produce more of the colors that we can actually see with our human eye. Okay. On my right, your left, what you'll see is you'll see what's called the CIE diagram. And this CIE diagram shows the, the color that you can see on that diagram over the curve is all the colors that we can see with our human eye. And Rec 709 was the Blu-ray standard or the HD standard. That's the smaller triangle. That's what those TVs could produce. We're moving to the um, other dotted line, the topmost dotted line, which is BT 2020. BT 2020 actually encompasses more of the visible light than we can see. So you'll get better color reproduction out of BT 2020. But in between Rec 709 and BT 2020, we have DCI P3, and that's just kind of an intermediate. And um, as we get there, it's more color than Rec 709, but not as much color as BT 2020. And the top TVs of today, the top TVs um, of 2017, they seem to be, they're able to produce about 90 plus percent of DCI P3 and 70 plus percent of uh, BT 2020. So they're getting there as far as color reproduction. As um, the technology advances, we'll get closer and closer and eventually all the TVs will be able to produce BT 2020 per the UHD standard. And the other thing about white color gamut or in this white color kind of spectrum is um, bit depth or color bit depth. Uh, the HD standard used an 8-bit color standard and the UHD standard is using a 10-bit color standard. And what that means is the transition between colors is much smoother. There's less banding in between colors. So that's what we want. You go from a um, 256 possible values of red, green, and blue, 8-bit um, to 1,024 values of RGB in 10-bit color, and then it moves on up to 12-bit, and it's 4096. But right now we're at 10-bit, and so you get better transition, a smoother transition between colors. So those are the key technologies. 4K, HDR, wide color gamut, and bit depth. Those are the four main technologies of TVs here in 2017. Now, how do you get this stuff on your TV? 
you need to make sure that all of your equipment supports two standards, HDMI 2.0A and HDC 2. Point, HDCP 2.2. Okay, HDMI 2.0A is 18 gigabits per second, so you can make sure you get all your data there. HDCP 2.2 um, ensures that um, the copy protection that Hollywood and the studios put on the disc that you buy or the content that you get is able to be unlocked and shown on your TV. You know, you get the piracy warning and everything. Well, if you don't have HDCP 2.2, you might get sound, but you won't get video. OK, so you want to have HDMI 2.0 and HDCP 2.2. Now, there's all of these terms and all of this stuff. And one of the things that has been done that I'm happy about is the content creators, that being Hollywood, the distributors, Amazon, Netflix, and your television manufacturer, Samsung, Sony, LG, all of them got together and they created an alliance. And with this alliance, what they did was we're gonna, we're gonna have a certain base level of certification for UHD. And it's called the UHD Alliance. And so they've gone through and they've said, with our alliance, um, if you buy a TV that has our tag on it, it's going, you're going to ensure that you're getting a certain level of UHD performance. And basically they hit all of the highlights of everything we talked about. The color resolution, or excuse me, the TV resolution being 4K, the wide color gamut, the HDR, and, how, and what qualifies as HDR because standard definition was up to 100 nits. And so basically, if you could do anything over 100 nits, you could consider yourself to be um, high dynamic range. Well, um, the UHD Alliance actually put some numbers on that, and I think it's starting at 540 and up, um, 540 nits, and nits is a measure of brightness, by the way, um, and up. And they have a certain way they measure it. And so if you buy a TV today and you want to future-proof yourself, or you buy anything today, if you want to buy even these, this disc, you can't see it here probably, but this disc actually has a UHD premium certification standard saying that, hey, this disc meets all that we um, certify for UHD, and all that that uh, coalition certifies for UHD, including HDR. Oh, and this is the movie saying. Um, but uh, if you want to buy something, if you want to future-proof yourself, those are things you need to do. And to make sure that you just buy TV or whatever you're buying that has a UHD premium certification on it, and you should be good to go for the next few years. Now, as we know, t technology is going to change, and we're going to buy another TV in I don't know five or ten years or something when you know 8K, 16K, whatever comes out, right? But right now, that's what you need to do in 2017. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like or subscribe below. I know this was a ton of information, but we just kind of wanted to get it out there for you. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. We read the comments. We'll try to get to them as soon as we can and uh, answer whatever questions we can. If we can't, we'll try to find the answer for you. And um, we'll see you next time and when we'll do another video, probably about home theater, well, actually about home theater basics. We'll see you next time. Thanks.